today we're going to be doing some discussions on SARMs, and this is going to be a quick little disclaimer. So SARMs are not something that we can prescribe, nor are they something that we sell. And by talking about them today, this is strictly for educational purposes. Um, SARMs themselves are experimental, which means that they are not approved by the FDA for any type of human consumption. Any evidence or discussion that we have on them today is going to be based on uh, a laboratory setting or experiments that were previously held, in addition to um, any evidence from people using it being purely anecdotal. And so through this video, we are not promoting the use of SARMs. We just really want to have people be informed about them because there is misinformation that goes around and people do try and pair them with TRT. And so we kind of just hope to inform you guys the best that we can. Um, thank you very much. Please enjoy the video. Hello, this is Garrett with Alpha MD. We're talking again about SARMs. In particular, today we're talking about RAD140, also known as Tesselon. Uh, as with all SARMs, the, the goal of the creation of this medication was to be a replacement for testosterone. Um, like all SARMs, it does not convert to DHT, and nor does it seem to convert to estrogen. So this is why there was a lot of excitement about these SARMs because they don't have uh, as much conversion into other um, sex hormones uh, as testosterone does. So why would you ever use RAD140? Well, it seems to be more selective of both muscle and bone androgen receptors, uh, which again would be more beneficial for muscle mass, also treating osteoporosis. Um, but as with other SARMs, they are still not um, uh, FDA approved yet. So RAD140 still, if you purchase it anywhere, it was again made in some, some guy's basement. So you cannot be sure that what you're receiving is in any way the correct uh, medication for one or the appropriate dosing too. Um, it should be noted there was a uh, study in the Journal of the American Medical Association that actually purchased 44 SARMs from 44 different companies and tested them. Uh, it was noted that only in about 20% of the 44 uh, SARMs that were studied, only about 20% of them were the actual medication as well as the actual dose. So bear that in mind. If you ever purchase RD140, you're purchasing, purchasing it online. It's not FDA regulated, so technically they could put anything in there that they want. And uh, as long as they specifically state not for human consumption on the bottle, it's entirely legal. So why would you ever choose to use RD140? Well, again, it sounds on paper, it sounds great. Why wouldn't you use it, right? It increases muscle mass, bone density, all the potential benefits of testosterone without any of the side effects. Well, um, ultimately, interest, the interesting part of RAD140 is of all the SARMs that exist out there, it's the only SARM that has ever been tested in humans. So uh, as it stands, we actually do have a, uh, a phase one trial of, of a test done with RAD140 in humans. Uh, it's important to note that uh, of the results of this study, 77% of the people who were in the study had to drop out due to adverse effects. So bear that in mind, uh, three quarters of the people in that study, a phase one study, had to drop out, uh, primarily due to elevated liver enzymes. Um, it was, again, it, as with all SARMs, they're an oral medication and it can be harsh on the liver. Uh, in these cases, most of them elevated their liver enzymes to a level that the researchers felt it was unsafe to continue, so they had to drop out. Uh, nausea and vomiting were found in, in another majority of patients, uh, enough to the, to the point that the, that the study participants felt that they needed to stop. So of those that did continue uh, throughout the entire entirety of the trial, uh, unfortunately, we don't have any actual results on muscle mass or bone density, mainly because um, they didn't take it for long enough. And also, again, that's not the point of a phase one trial. The point of a phase one trial is to see if taking a medication is safe. So we don't have any end results. We don't know if it works in humans. We don't know anything uh, as far as a double-blinded study is concerned. All we do have is anecdotal reports. 
anecdotally, people love RAD 140. RAD 140 is, is probably uh, felt to be the most uh, potent of these arms as far as muscle mass and uh, as far as fat loss is concerned. Uh, it seems to be the most popular one for that reason. Um, again, it can, it can typically uh, be uh, dosed in about a, a three-month course, so anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. Uh, but as with any SARM, it needs to be cycled off of. And the reason for that, again, is it can be harsh on the liver. Um, does it affect your testosterone levels and your pituitary glands? Um, as we discussed with other SARMs, it, uh, uh, some of the SARMs have been uh, known to suppress pituitary function, both FSH and LH release. Um, it's, it was felt that andarine may not affect the pituitary as much. Osterine has been proven to affect the pituitary gland. Well, RAD140 actually has been absolutely proven 100% of the time to be suppressive of the pituitary gland. What that means is you have to do a PCT if you ever take it. That means uh, it suppresses your natural testosterone production, and so you would need to do a post-cycle um, therapy uh, basically in an effort to get back to normal. Um, how is it dosed? It's typically taken at 10 milligrams daily. It does have a um, uh, extended half-life, so it's longer, so it's only once daily. Um, again, uh, some people have actually specifically asked, uh, what happens if I add RAD140 to my existing TRT? Well, um, there seems to be absolutely no benefit to doing this. Uh, one, testosterone has been proven safe. It's one of the, the safest medications that exists. You literally cannot overdose on it. It does not hurt your liver. It's safe across the board. It's a naturally occurring substance in your body already. Um, whereas, again, uh, this medicine is in no way natural. It, it is not naturally found in your body. And we know for a fact it hurts your liver. Um, if you were ever to take it for bodybuilding reasons, it makes no sense uh, because all you would have to do normally is actually just increase your testosterone dose as, as a base. So you get no additional benefit to add RAD140 if you are already on TRT, literally no benefit, except you put yourself at risk to using something that is not only not FDA approved, you don't actually know what's in that bottle. You, you literally, it could be salt, it could be dog poop. And that's legal because the, the label says not for human consumption. They can sell that to you legally. So bear that in mind. Uh, there is zero benefit to adding RAD or really any SARM to your existing TRT. So I want that to be absolutely clear. Um, all you're doing is putting yourself at risk. Um, we are going to be doing further um, uh, videos on other SARMs. In addition, we're going to be talking as well about some of the um, uh, peptide hormones, again, as we've been getting a lot of questions about these. So stay tuned for those.